hello and welcome to another video. Tonight I'll be taking the Soot Express, the sleeper train that runs between Lisbon and Hende in France. There's one part that will go to uh, Madrid as well. I think the train will split up in Valladolid in Spain or well combine the other way around. Anyway, I did this trip two times more over the last two months or so. Um, so in this video I will show you all different comfort categories. Um, normally I show you the station where I'm departing from. Um, since the train is starting at Lisboa um, Santa Apollonia station and I want well, the train to be empty to show you the four-bird sleeper compartment where I'm staying on tonight, it will be a shared compartment. Um, I will go there first and hopefully I will be first on the train. Uh, but I will show you this station, which is Lisbon Oriente station. The reason why is because when you well change trains in Portugal, you go somewhere else, you most likely end up at this railway station. Besides that, this railway station is way prettier. This is a real connecting railway station. All long distance trains do stop here and not any other station. Well, before we do anything else, let's roll the intro. It's general known that trains are way more environmental friendly than taking a car and especially a plane. Well, these are just some graphs that will show the environmental impact on this route. Trains won't clean the air, but still it can reduce the environmental impact a lot. The left side will be about the entire route, so from Faro to The Hague in the Netherlands where I live, and the right part is about this specific train. This is Lisbon Oriente Station. It has been designed by the architect Santiago Calatrava and it is the biggest intermodal transport hub of Portugal. All different kinds of transport will come together here. So it's not only a railway station, it is a big bus station as well. You'll find many long distance national and international buses at this station. Apart from that, many city buses do stop here as well. Since the number of international trains is really low, only two trains per day, and the capacity on these trains is not that high, buses may be a good alternative for when you want to go on an international journey. At the station you will find several ticket shops for different bus companies. The bus station can be found at the back of the railway station. You can use both the upper and the underground gallery and promenade to go to the bus platforms. All bus platforms are accessible by an elevator and stairs. Between the bus station and the railway station you will find a taxi stand. This is also where you find several rental car companies. Below the railway station you will find the metro station. Well, metro trains run pretty often. And by the use of the metro you can get pretty much anywhere in Lisbon. The metro is located at level minus 2 and 3. At the level minus 1 you will find a big square in the center of the railway station. You will also find many shops at this place. At the ground level you will also find some shops. And around the central square in the railway station you will find some food trucks as well here. Of course, the Christmas decoration you see in this video will only be visible when you visit this station during Christmas time. The most railway related services and shops can be found at the first upper floor. For example, ticket desks, waiting areas, etc. Information about directions and where you can find what facilities are clear indicated all over the station. Lisbon Oriente station is the only railway station in Portugal with a first class lounge. Well, I didn't travel on first class and it's only open on weekdays. You want many other places where you can wait as well, both in and outside. Although, with this kind of temperatures in Portugal, you don't need to wait inside that often. At the second level, you will find the railway tracks. And here you can see how beautiful the design is of this railway station. This station has been open since 1998 marking the opening of the World Expo that took place in Lisbon in that year. Also, when you visit the railway station at night, it can be really pretty as you can see here. I'm a huge fan of Calatrava's architecture. Next to the railway station, you'll find a big shopping mall. And through the underground facets, the shopping mall has been linked to the railway station as well. Even within the shopping mall, directions for the railway station are clearly marked. 
As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I'll move one station backwards, so hopefully there won't be that many passengers on the train yet, so I can give you a tour of the compartment. This is at Lisbon Santa Apollonia railway station. The trains that are being used on this route are Targo Type 7 trains. Well, these trains only consist of 6 carriages, what isn't a lot, and especially not when you consider that Targo trains do have shorter carriages. Because of their unique wheel arrangement, one set of wheels is shared between two carriages. Because of this, the carriages are also way shorter than normal trains. Because of this, the total capacity of these trains is only 114 people. This isn't a lot, and especially not for a train. It's no big surprise that most sleeping accommodations are always fully booked. You can get a little bit creative when it comes to this. For example, when the part between Hende and Lisbon has been fully booked, and you want to take the sleeper train and you live for example in Paris, you can also travel to Madrid first and take the sleeper train from Madrid. On the side of the train all carriage numbers are clearly marked. On some carriage numbers the comfort category has been clearly marked as well. For example Turista, which stands for the seating class. Well, I'll show you all different comfort categories later on in this video. At the back and at the end of each train set you will find a big car with a generator. This is to provide electricity for the carriages. So when you look at it this way, these trains consist of 8 carriages per train set. These two train sets will run together as one train between Lisbon and Medina del Campo in Spain. This was on my way when I was traveling to Lisbon from Hende when the train stood still at this station and the part from Madrid was arriving. At the side of the train on some compartments the route will be displayed digital and on some compartments it will be, well, like this. Within all the carriages the carriage numbers are clearly marked as well. Well, in this video I will show you all different comfort categories. But first I will show you some public spaces of the train. This is when you walk through the train and in this part you will find the most luxury compartments, the ground class. One unique thing about this train is the dining car. Because I did several journeys, I found that there are different kinds of dining cars on these trains. Because the relatively low capacity of these trains, I do have some mixed feelings about having a dining car. I also feel like they can add some more beds to these trains. But the dining car is really good and it's a big part of the train experience. The breakfast is okay in the dining car like you just saw, but having dinner is great here. Please do note you can only pay with gas money in this train. Since I will show you all different comfort categories later on in this video, I will show you some of the toilets first. Well the toilets are pretty much the same all over the train. They were kept clean during actually all rides I had on these trains. On some toilets you'll also find a power plug for your racer. Well, from this point I'll show you all different comfort categories. After that I'll show you some views I had from the train. Well, this is what you get when you stay in grand class. These are always private compartments, so it means you have a two or one bed sleeper compartment. Uh, well, it says a daytime position, so I have two chairs. I'll be staying here with a friend of mine, so we, got, we can turn this into a bed when it's a night position. Um, you can turn the light on and off like this. There's a reading light for the beds as well over here. Um, doesn't work. Or does it? Yeah, it works. Uh, although you don't see it that well right now. Um, you have phones. I have no idea what these are for. Um, well, you have some luggage space over here. And here you find some extra luggage space and extra pillow. Um, when you want to use the upper berth, uh, you can, well, use this. As a stair, as the stairs, it can also function like a table. But well, these are the stairs for the upper berths. Uh, you can lock your compartment like this. Uh, the conductor can open it when you close it like this. But when you close it like this, they, nobody can't get in. Can get in from outside. Um, you have some hangers for your clothes. Um, there's a well, garbage can, big window. Um, over here you can control the volume um, and what's the, well, where's Grand Class is all about having your own private bathroom. 
So here it is, your own Ensuite shower. And I think this is just a very luxurious thing to just be able to have a shower on a train that has something really special. Um, so your own private shower, uh, toilet, of course. Um, and you, well, get some towels and some toiletry as well. Um, I will show you in a bit what's inside. Um, get some complimentary water. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So, oh, no. one more little thing. Um, I open the door. Oh. You will get a key card to open or close the compartment like this. So you can get in from outside when you're working with the rest of the car. Well, these are the toiletries you will get in the train. Uh, well, toothbrush. Um, well, just basic stuff. Here you can see how the compartment looks in night position, just before we went to bed. So the morning after is still dark outside, but what's in the winter as well, so it doesn't that's really that crazy. Um, these mattresses are just really soft. I think these are the best mattresses I ever had on a night train. Really good. Um, when I mention one downside of this train, there's no power plug in the cabin itself. There is one over there um, next to the mirror in the bathroom, but, but there's no power plug in the cabin itself. So that's really a downside. Um, but for the rest, it was really good. The, the, the pressure in the shower is perfect. So this is a work-related trip. Um, so I work for a railway company. No, I don't work for a railway company, but I work for a travel agency that sells railway tickets. Um, there's only a small number of, well, ground class wood and sweet shower and toilet. And there's one colleague of mine who has, well, the same kind of cabin, but then without own private shower and toilet. And this is actually what they look like. And to be honest, I think these are way better. There's more space here. There's a big mirror in the at the window as well. You can lock it like this so nobody can get in from outside. Well, the conductor can open it if you do it, lock it like this. It doesn't work that well. The so light button over here gets really dark. Well, it's not this one. Um, well, the same thing with the ladder. This is typical for Togo trains. Um, you have to do it like this. Pull it up. Well, Oh yeah, here it goes. Um, here for ladder to climb the upper berth as well. What you can see over there. Um, well, you have two seats. You have a table in the middle. I don't have this in my compartment. Um, you have two power plugs. One over there. And one over there. Um, washing sink. Actually, I think this is way nicer. Um, over here, you have some hangers for your clothes. Um, yeah, to put some luggage space over there. What is what I uh, well in pretty much every sleeper train. Really, to be honest, I think this is better. You don't have your own shower, but there's it feels more spacious. Um, you have power plugs, and well, this is something really important. It looks like these are refurbished. Um, and also, what's really different, like when you walk the hall, it looks like this. So they made it sideways. Um, and just like in my own. I mean, you have your key card. You can do it like this and open and close it. I shot this in one of the other trips and it looks like the compartment I just show you has been refurbished. Somehow I feel like when you're staying on this train, the lower the comfort category is, the better it gets. This is a four berth sleeper. So you have four beds uh, there as well. You have some space for your luggage over there. That's not a lot when you're staying with four people. Uh, but you have some extra space down here. Um, there's a water sink. That's And down here you get a complimentary bottle of water and some earplugs. Um, it looks like um, all beds do have their own power plug. You have some space to put your phone down here. Um, and over here or let me get some extra light. You have some hangers. So, and below here, you have some extra space for your luggage as well. 
um, just like the, the um, well, two berth compartments, the hallway is placed sidewards, as you can see here. Um, and you can lock it like this. When you lock it like this, the conductor can open it from the outside. Um, but when you lock it like this, can, nobody can get in. It's not a good idea to do this when you're staying in a sh shared compartment. Uh, something went wrong. Here you go. Um, because people might get on at night. Um, uh, the bed numbers are over here. Um, there's a cup holder. Um, you can place this on the side of your bed over here. I show you. You can place it over here. So it's a kind of hard to fall out at night. I mean, if you do your very best, you can always fall out of your bed. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. On this place where you can find the hangers, you can also find the ladder to climb the upper berths. Um, well, I don't know what to say else anymore. I think we all have it here. Apart from the complimentary water I just show you, you will get this as well when you're staying on a four berth compartment. A toothbrush, earplugs and soap. Well, we didn't put the compartment in daytime position, but this is how it more or less looks like when you put it in daytime position. At least you can get an idea of, well, how this looks. On the previous two comfort categories, you will find only one carriage per comfort category. On the lowest comfort category, which you can see here, what is called tourista and or basically chairs, you will find two carriages. Most chairs will be put into driving position and will come in a layout like this. You will find a big table in the chair in front of you and there's a footrest. You can also recline the chairs. The curtains will really filter out the light, so it's good for a night's sleep. I also stayed on one of these and I surprisingly slept well. At the end of each compartment you'll find some extra space for your luggage and of course you can use the overhead luggage racks as well. At night the light will be put off so it's easier for you to sleep. When you stay in Teresta there are no power plugs near the chairs. From this moment on I'll show you some views I had from the train. Now the views are on the way from Lisbon to Hende and this is all in Spain. Since I did it in winter, I didn't saw that much because on the biggest part of the journey, it was just dark outside. So good morning, it was a good ride through the night, I slept pretty well. Um, I got out here at the station of San Sebastian or Donostia as it's called in um, Basque. Anyway, um, I will continue my journey now with a local train which is not in the international timetable, it's called Escotren. 
I will make a small video about this train as well. It's not a long distance, uh, but it has some facility. Well, it it's, has some things worth mentioning. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. When you like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, of course. See you on my next video.